Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul, and in this Red Game to the Com video, we're going to be discussing Intel exclusively because a whole bunch of Intel news has popped up over the past 24 or so hours, specifically revolving around Coffee Lake and the 8th and 9th generation processors. So this can be segmented into two distinct parts, the first being desktop and the second being mobile. We'll tackle the mobile side first, also known as Coffee Lake H. And this particular set of processors from what we can understand, is actually based on Coffee Lake H. It is not a Cable Lake refresh. And there are five distinctive SKUs. The first is the i3-8300H, the i5-8400H, the i7-8750H, the 8850H, and finally, the 8950HK. So the 8300 has four cores, four threads, the 8400H, six cores, six threads. But the i 7 87 50H and the 8850H have six cores, six threads, but the i9, which is fairly interesting considering 8950HK, has once again six cores, 12 threads, three, uh, sorry, 12 megabytes of level 3 cache. So you may say to yourself, well, gee, why is it known as i9 then? Well, apparently this particular processor is overclockable, which is Fairly unusual for mobile, but what's really interesting is all of these processors are lifts, uh, listed as 45 watts. About three months ago, there was actually a benchmark which was released for a 6-core, 12-thread processor, which was indeed a Coffee Lake H C uh, CPU. And this was on Geekbench, and it scored 19,129 for the multi-core, and single core was also fairly impressive, 4,013 points. Unfortunately, information on all of these processors, specifically the clock speeds, is still unknown. So we don't know base frequency or turbo frequency, and it's probable that it's still a bit early to call this information as well. Perhaps most key of all, this is the first CPU Intel have actually called an i9, which really could be considered mobile orientated. There are also a whole bunch of new 8th generation uh, desktop processors for Coffee Lake S, also known as desktop. I'm not going to read all of these out, because quite frankly, most of them are not that interesting. But what we do have here is the 8650K, for example. Uh, it looks like it's still got 6 cores, 6 threads, but it's possible we have some tweaks regarding the clock speed. We also have the... Um, i5-8550 as well, and uh, a whole bunch of i3 processors, including the i3-8320, um, the 8320T, the 8300T, the 8120, and so on, and so on, and so on. Unfortunately, a lot of the clock specifications are not known yet, so for me, the most interesting CPU out of all of these is the i5-8650K. It could be very similar to the Devil's Canyon. For those who don't remember, this was back in the days when Herswell was the processor of choice. In essence, there is quite a gap between the 8600K and the 8700K, especially when it comes to all core turbo frequencies. So it's possible that the 8650K may be a little closer to the 8700, but of course missing hyperthreading. Right. Now here's where things become completely and utterly speculation, because we have names, and apparently, according to videocards.com and Anantech and a couple of other websites, the SKU names are actually identified and defined by Intel themselves, but just because they're listed doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to be launched, let's say, tomorrow. I'm going to read out a few of the names before we talk about the specifications or the potential uh, specifications or even the potential usage scenario. So we have i5, 9600K, 9600, 9500, 9400, and a few other 90, uh, sorry, i5s as well. And then we get into the i3 territory with the 9300, 9300T, 9100, 9100T, and so on down the stack. These uh, parts are listed as most likely being 65 watts, although we don't know what the 9600K is going to be. Obvious thing missing is the 9700K. Now, this is where it starts to get a little complex. 
There are two potential possibilities. I mean, technically, I suppose there's more, but these are the most likely two. The first is what we are seeing here is another revision of Coffee Lake. The other potential possibility is instead these are going to be Ice Lake based. So don't forget, we do have the Z390 chipsets, which are coming out at some point or another in 2018. But from what we understand, Z390 is more of an iterative upgrade. There have been some rumours and speculation that we'll see these as an 8-core Intel part, but it's somewhat of a leak which uh, appeared from a Eurocom forum. However, whether that you want to believe that or not is totally down to you. There has certainly been an incremental update before. In fact, I've told uh, this story before a couple of times on the channel. I'm sure I'm not the only one who can attest to this. But back in the days of Sandy Bridge, specifically I bought a 2500K. And it was a P67 motherboard. It was an Asus motherboard. And everything was swell. Everything was wonderful. Until a couple of months after launch. And basically, <coughs> yeah, I got hit with the SATA bug. So I didn't RMA my board. I could have done. I just decided to ride it out. And eventually, of course, the SATA ports on the motherboard, at least many of them, just balked. They just broke. So what Intel did back in the day was release a slightly different version of the motherboard known as Z68. This was, of course, a replacement of the P67. Now, in essence, there's most likely not any issues with the Z370, so instead it's probably going to be a more incremental update, perhaps a few small feature changes, which we've discussed before on the channel. Now, I'm sure as well, I'm going to get some people uh, already screaming at me in the comments, but Paul... Currently we're on Coffee Lake, what about Canon Lake, right? Because it's supposed to go, <laughs> and once again, this is this is a fun, happy experience. It was supposed to go Sandy Bridge, Ivy Bridge, Haswell, Haswell Refresh, also known as Devil's Canyon, Broadwell, Sky Lake, Cable Lake, then the Cable Lake Refresh, which mm, caused some controversy, to say the least. Then, of course, we had Coffee Lake, which, uh, of course, caused further controversy because we needed the 300 series motherboard. And then... Uh, Intel told us that we were going to get Cannon Lake and then Ice Link. Well, here's where it gets a bit weird. Supposedly, uh, Cannon Lake may either be skipped entirely for desktops or have incredibly short shelf life because, according to Digi Times and others, uh, the manufacturer has already planned to skip Cannon Lake generation to wait for Ice Lake. More specifically, a lot of OEMs have decided to skip Cannon Lake because of Ice Lake, and that's because Intel were hitting delays with 10NM, which of course is critical for Canon Lake to be used. And Ice Lake, for those who don't know, is supposedly going to be utilising 10NM+, plus, in other words, a refined variant of the manufacturing process, whereas Canon Lake is just going to use vanilla 10NM. For those who don't know as well, Skylake uh, was 10NM, but the first uh, introduction of... For, uh, sorry, Skylake was 14NM, with Broadwell being also 14NM, and then you had uh, Cable Lake being 14NM+, plus, so it was refined, and then you had the Refresh being uh, on the same node, 14NM+, plus as well, and then Coffee Lake, which is, of course, the current CPU that Intel are touting for the desktop, on 14NM++. Plus plus. So it's most likely Z390 is going to be something about processor support, perhaps slightly updated feature sets, but just what the hell the uh, i5-9600K is going to be, in other words, what the comp speeds are going to be, what the specifications are going to be, and perhaps most crucially of all, what the actual architecture is going to be, is going to be very interesting to me. The possibilities, once again, I'll just quickly go over it because I know this is quite a complex topic, and to be honest with you, no one really knows 100%, and we're not going to know, uh, you know the final details until probably... CES, which is going to be taking place in January, but the most likely possibilities are either a refreshed version of Coffee Lake, Cannon Lake possibly being uh, tweaked, or perhaps they've managed to shift the schedule once again, and that will indeed be the ninth generation for desktops, which would uh, be contra contradictory to the earlier rumours, which were just a couple of months ago, or 
we're going to see Ice Lake, and in which case it would seem very odd and very early for them to put this in the Ada 64 change logs, but, you know, it's not necessarily, uh, you know, that you appear in the Ada 64 change log and then the CPU is going to be launched in the next few months. But my money is that we're going to be seeing some type of refresh with the Z390, which would mean most likely a Coffee Lake refresh. So it's going to be very interesting to see how all of this plays out. Anyway, I know this has been a bit of a itsy bitsy video simply because of the absolute sheer madness that currently Intel are, are putting out in terms of the processors. And it, I think it's fair to say that the generation thing that we saw back in the day, like, you know, you had a clear a clear line in the sand, like Pentium 2, Pentium 3, Pentium 4, and obviously there were some architectural um, similarities with some of the processors, like, you know, Pentium Pro and Pentium 2 and that type of thing, but, you know, now it's becoming absolutely weird. Anyway, with all of that said, hopefully you have enjoyed the video. I'll see you soon. No more stuff. Like, share, subscribe. There is an awful lot of cool stuff actually coming up on the channel. Now, I have heard uh, a lot of people asking me to do Crisis Free on Fred Ripper. That is currently being done. I have a whole bunch of productivity stuff, which, again, other people have asked me to do on Fred Ripper. So that is almost finished. Um, so hopefully by this weekend, all of the benchmarking will be done. Uh, there is a really cool video that I've worked on. I've actually sent the script to a couple of viewers, actually, and they've really liked it because I like some feedback sometimes, you know, of my work, which is kind of good because you need to know if you've missed something. And I think people are really going to like that. It's going to go into, you know, processes um, in terms of how uh, silicon is created and, you know, uh, dye shrinks and all this type of stuff because I've got a lot of feedback with my Ryzen video. So that should be pretty awesome. And there is a few other bits as well. We've got a couple of reviews. AIM is finishing the editing of a GTX 1060 review. So that should be up hopefully by this weekend. Uh, sorry, by the end of next week. And there should be some other cool stuff as well. Anyway, as I said, it's been a bit of an itsy bitsy uh, last several weeks. Because Amy and I have just been like absolutely ravaged with plagues. But now we're well again. We can hit the, you know, we can hit things running and you know, start smacking them on the head with a cricket bat. Oh, and one last thing, and this is from me to you. If you've not already watched it, you should check out Punisher on Netflix because it is pretty damn awesome. With all of that said, take care of yourself. Oh, and that's not sponsored, by the way. That's just me saying it's pretty damn awesome. With all of that said, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.